Hello YouTube and welcome to Sonya To Be Honest channel. Today we're cooking collard greens and cornbread. For those of you who say you don't have time to cook, well guess what? We're going to do it two different ways. The first way we're going to do it the modern way. Here's a pre-cut bag of chopped greens so it takes all the lead work of actually chopping the greens up. And for those of you who like it the old traditional way, the way my grandmother used to cook it when I was growing up, I'm going to do it that way. I actually went to the farmer's market, my local farmer's market, and I bought some green. I'm going to actually clean these, chop them, and we're going to cook them together. So before we get started, let's go ahead and cover our hair so we won't find any hair in the food. Let's get started. There's some additional things you may need when cooking your collard green to add season and flavor to it. I use different type of season, dry season. The first one I use is onion powder, which is my favorite, which you're going to use. I always tell you to start out at least with one I want to say one teaspoon because it all depends on how much you're actually cooking and it's best to start off with just a little and begin to add more season if needed um, a pinch of garlic or do one fourth teaspoon of garlic in your collard greens you're going to do one fourth of black pepper and with the season all you are actually going to do since i'm cooking like a bunch of greens um, for the bunch that I'm going to actually hand chop, I'm going to use probably about mm, a third cup of this. One third cup of this. Not one third, a third cup of this. Um, and I also like, like to add just a little bit of sugar to the greens. The kids love it when I put sugar in it. And also, if you want to add optional, this is optional. If you want to add some meat to it, that's fine. What I'm going to be using is smoked neck bones. You can use smoked turkey neck. You can use ham. Whatever kind of meat you want to put in it is your preference. If you want to put it in it, if you don't, that's fine too. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to do the bag collar, in which we spoke about. It is always best to buy things within the bag. That's the closest you're going to get to the freshness of fresh vegetable. It's okay if you eat canned every now and then, but I would prefer the chopped collard green. We're going to go ahead and open that and put it inside the pot. Now, one thing you're going to notice about me when I cook, certain vegetables like greens i'm not gonna i'm not gonna cook them i'm not gonna put them in the same wrench them off and all that i'm gonna put this in the pot as it is let's go ahead and open this bag let's take these greens and when you buy it in the bag every 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 now and then you may come across a couple of pieces inside of your pot like that dark green, just a burnt leaf. Go ahead and just discard that. I have one or two in here. So that, there you have it. That is one pot. That is the, that's what came out of the bag. So for this pot that just came out of the bag, as you can see, it has the stems and the green mixed together. Really, a lot of people like to cook with the stem. But me personally, I really don't like it. But it's okay to eat the stem because they say that's where all the nutrient is inside the stem. So I'm going to go ahead and add probably about a gallon and a half of water to this pot. Now the first thing we're actually doing, we're, add, we're adding the water to the pot. We're going to add about a gallon and a half or right at about a gallon because you want the water to come, you want, you want your water to rise above the green. So we're not going to worry about putting any kind of season inside because what we're doing now, although we have added this water to the pot, we're going to place it on the stove. We're going to cook it for probably about 10-15 minutes. That's the way we're going to actually clean the greens. We're going to cook it for about 10-15 or 15 minutes. We're going to pour that water off, add some fresh water, and then we're going to begin to add our season. But this is the bag version of collard greens. If you don't have time to cut like this, we're going to use the bag. We're going to go ahead and place this on the stove now. Okay, while that is cooking on a medium heat, we're going to let that go ahead and get started. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to bring down my cutting board. What's good about fresh greens? I know you're probably saying this is a lot of greens, but guess what? If we don't eat all these greens, I can actually freeze them and we can use it later with another meal of some sort. But I got all these greens for $1 at the Little Giant's. Um, farmer's market that's not too far from my house so this is how you actually cut a green 
What I'm gonna use for this is my cutting board. I'm gonna actually chop my greens on my cutting board. I really don't use my cutting board for meats because for me, I just feel like the, the juice from the meat absorbs into this board. And if there's any kind of juice that's gonna absorb in my board, I'd rather put me the greens. Okay, a couple of leaves we're gonna do in a different way. This is one stem of a collard green leaf. We're gonna take that, we're gonna cut this bottom half off, discard it. There are several ways you can do this. For, uh, for those who are just learning, I recommend go down the sides. Go down the sides. There's your leaf. Now with this, if you wanted to use the nutrient from that leaf, you could do this. Just, just dice it. And just add a few pieces in the pot. You don't have to add a whole lot. Just like I said, some people like that stem. Me personally, I kind of don't. But you have to be versatile when you're cooking. You're going to take your leaves. And what I like to do is roll it. When I roll it, I cut it in half. Roll it again. Cut it again. And then I begin to cut it. And there you have it. Let's try it one more time. Cut it from the base. If you have some uh, kitchen shears, that's fine to use. That's one leaf. That's two leaves. I'm gonna roll it. And my twins, they love helping with, with collard greens. They love cooking collard greens. Or helping the prepping part of it. However, size, whatever size you really want your greens, that's fine. And there you go. As we talked about the stem, let's go ahead and add some more pieces to the pot. there you have it we're gonna I'm gonna cut up the remaining of all my collard greens by hand we're gonna add them to the pot add some water and let it clean itself first we're gonna cook it on the stove for about 15 minutes to, for the cleaning process we're gonna pour that water off and then we're gonna add more water for the cooking process okay the next step to our meal with the collard green and cornbread we talked about cornbread we're gonna do something that won't take a whole lot of time so we're gonna use this jiffy cornbread mix I'm actually going to use two boxes of Jiffy cornbread mix. We're going to use probably about a tablespoon of butter, milk, and two eggs. Oh, and just a um, tablespoon of sugar. I know you said it's a lot of sweet but sugar. Okay. First thing you want to do, if you have a blender or a hand mixer of some sort you want to use. Now, I have the Ninja. I talk about my Ninja all the time. That's what I use. We're going to put the milk in here first because if I put the actual cornmeal mix in here first it's going to stick to the bottom please follow the directions on the back I normally don't use measuring uh, utensils because I pretty much know how much to put in inside of it that's probably about your that's enough probably um probably about a cup and a half is what I have right now because I'm using two packs that's one pack that's the second pack And add your sugar. I'm going to use a spoon instead of the measuring. That's one. This one. Two. That's enough of that. Margarine. And a third. And then I'm going to go ahead and chop my eggs right quick. Uh -oh. Okay, don't do like I just did. I got eggs here. I'm going to take it out. One second. This is the egg. I'm gonna go ahead now. Personally, these the the cores on the eggs. I'm gonna take those off. I do not like those on eggs. I don't. Well, you gotta come that way. I'm gonna take those off. You don't have to. You can put your whole egg in if you want to. This is just my preference. I have a thing about those little cores on the egg, so I'm gonna take them off. 
one more. Ugh. Okay, take that off. There's a, I see a shell, but I'm gonna catch it on the way going in, and there it is. There it is. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, got that out. Pour the rest of my egg in. I'm gonna put my top on my ninja. Okay, I'm actually going to make some cornbread muffins and I'm going to do a pan of cornbread. On the pan of cornbread, once it comes out, I'm going to glaze it a little bit with honey. So, I'm going to make this a little bit more. Okay, that's it. Okay. As you can see, I have a muffin pan. I'm going to lightly coat that with some margarine. This is a cooking oil. You can use butter flavor, or, uh, the original kind, it doesn't matter which kind you use. But if you want to take a chance and you have, have like a non-stick pan, you can actually use that too. Okay, I've completed mixing all of my cornbread mix. And I'm going to actually pour it inside of the pan directly from the container. You want to fill them almost close to the rim because when it rise, it's going to be the perfect size. Okay, there you go. There's my muffins. I just finished mixing up. I'm going to go ahead and put those in the oven and let them bake for, let's see how long. Put it on 400 and it's going to bake for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. As you can see, I've just finished cutting all the greens up by hand. I'm going to go ahead and add the first pot of water to it. We're going to boil that first pot of water, and then we're going to pour it off and then put some fresh water in and then begin to add our season. This is another way of cleaning your collards instead of just letting it sit in the sink like they used to do way back when. We're going to do something a little bit more um, modern or something different. So as you can see, they're all chopped up. I'm going to go ahead and add the water. I'm actually going to fill that up. Okay, I have finished filling this pot of greens up with water. What I'm going to do now is take it over to the stove and let it boil for probably about 15-20 minutes. Really 15 minutes. That's the first phase of cleaning the greens. We're going to do that first. Let's go ahead and take this over to the stove. You can actually turn that on a medium setting because we're just really just cleaning them. Let's go ahead and check on our cornbread. They're ready. We're going to sit them off to the side and wait for the greens to cook. Let them cool down before serving. Okay, these are the pre-cut greens in which we have boiled for approximately 15 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and pour this first batch of water off of here and add some more water. I would advise you to use oven mitten. I have actually let this sit, set and cool down a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and, and as you can see it's green. This is the first. This is actually a better way of cleaning your greens, to be honest. Because, as we know, heat will kill anything. And also, you're going to notice, too, that your greens going to actually cook down once you do this. Okay. I've taken all of that water off there. And here's what we have left. I'm going to go ahead and add some more water. It's our second. This is going to be our second pot of water. I'm going to add about a gallon of water. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pour that off one more time. I'm going to add the water. That's okay. If a few fall out, that's fine. As you can see, the water is getting clear. Okay. Go ahead and add some more water to that. Add approximately about a gallon of water. I'm gonna set that there for a second. Before I actually place it on the stove, I'm gonna go ahead and um, 
and add all the seasons. You season is to preference. I'm gonna add probably probably about one about a tablespoon of all-purpose season. I'm gonna add a fourth teaspoon of that black pepper, garlic powder. I just wanna you don't play around with this garlic. Let's just use a little bit of that. Onion powder. I have some already open. Let me see. Check right quick. Oh, onion powder. That's your onion, onion powder. I'm gonna mix that up. Oh, and if you, it's to taste, like I said, I'm gonna add just a little bit of sugar. Now, I did show you earlier that I would be using some type of cooking meat to go in it. But what I'm gonna do, probably around about the last 15 minutes of cooking this, because if you add your meat now, it's just gonna fall apart. So you want this to actually cook into the season first, so absorb that. And then you're gonna add your meat, probably about the last 15 minutes of cooking. Because as it's cooking and simmering, it's gonna still cook in the greens and absorb that. But right now we want the greens to actually absorb the seasoned salt or the dry season that we actually place into the water. I'm gonna go ahead and place the lid on that and take this back over to the stove and allow it to cook for probably about an hour and a half, two hours. And we'll go from there. Okay, these are the greens that I actually cut up by hand. We're gonna go ahead and drain the first batch of water. This is a very heavy pot, so if we have any, uh, I've been mittens, I advise you to use it, but I just use pretty much any kitchen rat that I have, so which I have some. It's hot. I don't know if you can see the color, but it's actually green. And I'm gonna try not to burn myself. hot I'm gonna go ahead and add some cold water to try to cool it down some because we're gonna pour this off anyway before adding the final water to cook the greens in. I'm gonna go ahead and try to cool that down. Pull that to the side, place that top and have it on there. I'm gonna pick that up. Now you can probably see how green the water is. Over. That's fine. I'm gonna show you. These actually cook down, so I'm gonna show you right quick before I put that final water in there. They cook down. Green's gonna cook down. That was a lot of uh, greens that I actually chopped up. And when you're cutting greens, you cook, you're gonna chop them to the size that you want. I don't really like it looking like baby food, so um, I chop them where it's it's just the right size. And in a pot like this, I think I'm gonna put like two gallons of water in it. Cause you don't wanna put too, too much water because if you put too, too much water in it, it's gonna taste just like water. This, I'm gonna add my season. Get the one that's open. Mm, just a hint of onion. I would say garlic powder, I'm sorry. Black pepper. About a fourth a teaspoon of that. And a tablespoon of sugar. Well, really that was like two tablespoons. Okay, I'm gonna take my spoon. Stir it once after sitting still in the sink. And normally you can smell the season. And once it starts cooking, you taste it. You take some and put it on a platter and you're gonna taste it to see if it's how you would probably want to, to eat it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take this pot and place it back on the stove. This is gonna cook for probably about an hour and a half, almost two hours. In the last 15, 20 minutes of these home these home um, cut um, collards, we're gonna place the 
the seasoned meat. I prefer to use um, smoked neck bones. Sometimes I sometimes I will use turkey neck, but today I want some uh, neck bones in it. And you don't want to put this in too soon because, like I stated, if you put it in too soon, what's going to happen is it's going to actually just fall apart, fall apart, and you're going to have bones everywhere. So that's going to be the last thing we put in. We're going to put this back on the stove. And here's the final results for the collard green and cornbread. The first platter that we have is the collard greens that I actually chopped up by hands, served with two cornbread muffins. The second plate is the collard greens that I actually purchased in the bag, which you see it has more stem inside of it. So that's the only thing. When you buy it in the bag, it's going to have more of the stems inside the collard greens, but it's a easier way rather than chopping the greens up yourself. And it's served with two cornbread muffin glazed with a little honey on top. And there you have it, cornbread and collard greens. I hope you have enjoyed the time we have shared together in making this old southern tradition of collard greens and cornbread. We actually had two different servings. The first one was done the modern way. We actually cooked that straight from the bag. The second way was the old traditional way, the way my grandmother used to make it. Hand chopped, clean, and cooked. Served with some cornbread muffins with a glaze of honey. 